EPA AA meteorologist Bobby Mortage here with your outlook for August 30th, 2023. It is Wednesday, middle of the work week, and the Wednesday video forecast is proudly sponsored by the KP Agency in Easton, Pennsylvania. The KP Agency is Easton's only woman-owned insurance group and is an independent brokerage specializing in Medicare insurance products. Turning 65 and enrolling in Medicare can easily be described as one of the most overwhelming and confusing processes. You are bombarded with ad mail and endless calls, and the information out there can be both misleading and unreliable. Why not use a trusted local professional to guide you through the process, and at no cost, the KP Agency can educate and enroll you in all of your Medicare-related needs. Visit them online at thekpa.net, that's thekpa.net, or give them a call at 908-329-7140. And please tell them Bobby from EPAWA sent you. They are the KP Agency and Easton, proud sponsors of the Wednesday video forecast. So today, I'm going to start off the video with just what's going on here locally today. I'm going to get into the hurricane here in a minute. Uh, we do have, well, hurricanes, I should say. Uh, we do have a cold front moving through early this morning. There will be some showers very early this morning in association with that. And then once it moves through this afternoon, the actual cold front itself, humidity is going to come down a little bit. But we are going to be warm today ahead of that cold front. 76 to 85 is the temperature spread today. A little bit cooler in the interior because the cold front is going to move through a little bit earlier. Far eastern areas will see the temperatures in the uh, mid-80s today. But then tomorrow you see behind me, above me, uh, mostly sunny skies, 74 to 78 is the spread in temperatures from northwest to southeast. Here is the NAM high res. Future simulated radar starting us off very early, 6 o'clock in the morning. You see a line of showers and perhaps even some embedded thunder with this as it moves through. And that is going to move very quickly off the coast before noon. And uh, in some cases, well before noon. So uh, we'll have the opportunity for a few showers this morning after the front clears. Clouds give way to sun, wind shift to the northwest, humidity lowers during the afternoon, and that is it. Uh, not only it for today, but we're likely to be it for the next 10 days. I know we, some of you have been telling me that uh, we need rain. Listen, don't bother commenting on the YouTube video, uh, in the YouTube comments, or on social media, Facebook, Twitter, or whatever, about how we need the rain. I can't do a damn thing about it, okay? We are getting into a... Uh, long stretch, a prolonged stretch of dry weather. Some of you are saying we need rain. I mean, water your grass. That's the only thing I can tell you to do because there's nothing I can do and there's nothing that's going to be changing in this regard uh, going forward. We have a very long dry stretch coming up that could be 10 days or more uh, be after this front passes this morning. It is what it is. And uh, that is not going to, you're not going to have any help from the tropics here because this system here, Hurricane Idalia, is going to stay off to the south. Now, for those of you that don't give a hoot about the hurricane, you can uh, stop the, stop here because there's really nothing that I can tell you that's going to be interesting here over the next 10 days. Uh, other than the fact that our local weather is going to be cooler over the next, uh, you see above me, 74 to 78 is the spread in temperatures here for Thursday. It's going to be very similar on Friday. Then we get back to near average or pretty close to near average here on Saturday. The second half of the weekend is going to turn much warmer, and uh, especially as we get to Labor Day Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday of next week, temperatures will be pressing 90 degrees in some place, uh, places, and uh, some places even into the lower 90s for highs, especially on Tuesday and Wednesday of next week. And then we have a cold front coming through late at the end of the next week. It looks like it's a dry front right now, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Here's Hurricane Idalia, which is down here making landfall this morning, on Wednesday morning as most likely a strong Category 3 or a low-end Category 4 hurricane. That is right. It's a major hurricane, no matter how you want to spin it. Uh, it's just a matter of how strong does it get. The, initial, the official National Hurricane Center track has it looking like this, with a major hurricane here making landfall very early on Wednesday morning as a Category 4 storm. And that is because it has... Uh, Projected winds of 115 knots, which is, I'm trying to do the math here in my head, uh, 1.15 times. Okay, so that'd be 132 miles per hour uh, is the projected speed of the winds at landfall here in, uh, in in the Big Band of Florida. We do know it's going to be the Big Band of Florida. There's no guessing game with that. And we do expect it to move north 
east and then eventually off the coast and it's going to do a kind of a, a, a drift to the south here you see this kind of goes like this and then it starts tailing off to the southeast eventually uh, by the time i get to sunday so this is not going to be something that's going to be affecting our area why am i wasting my time on this storm here one to let you know that there's no chance that this is going to be all of a sudden changing paths and coming up to uh the northeast united states and affecting our area there's no chance of that okay uh, two, we have some clients that are energy clients, uh, utility clients that have sent mutual assistance down here to Florida. And you may have heard about that on the news where they you see uh, you know hundreds of crews that are on standby down there waiting for something to happen. Uh, and it is going to happen. They're going to have to respond to it. And it's, gonna, it's in an effort to try to gain power back to the communities that lose it because they will undoubtedly lose it, especially in this corridor right in here. This area right in here, they're going to have a big in-between. They're going to have some serious power outages uh, to deal with here with this storm. And it could be prolonged, meaning not just a couple days, but it could be weeks until it's restored. So hopefully the mutual assistance that is being sent to Florida will be enough to combat that a little bit and speed up the process a little bit uh, You know, with these uh, recoveries. You can't, you can't avoid these things. You could just, you know, when they have evacuation orders, you just get out of dodge that's what it's basically how it works okay you get out of there save your life come back if you you know you have you deal with the destruction later you kind of expect that's going to happen uh and you just deal with it when you come back and life throws you lemons you make lemonade kind of thing right uh, uh trying to be not trying to belittle it here but that's basically what it is and here is this monster on visible satellite uh which is the nighttime visible satellite and this is just a beast uh, of course, an eye, you find eye in the center here of the circulation of this thing. Uh, the only hope of, of weakening this thing before landfall is that it goes through an eye wall replacement cycle. It is possible, uh, but and that's the hope that something like this happens. It's ma mainly making a almost due north path here, a little east of north right now. Uh, but So that takes you right into Appalachian Bay, and that's right in the Big Bend of Florida, which is kind of right in here. There's the Big Bend of Florida. It's been that same landfall point for days, okay? We started talking about this uh, last Thursday. If you look at the, now these are all ar archived. You want to look back at the old uh, videos that I did. Uh, we were projecting landfall for the Big Bend of Florida back on Thursday, last Thursday. I mean, today's Wednesday, six days later, it's still the same thing. This is where it's going to hand. It's going to land. That's what, you know, there's not a question of that, of where it is going to be uh, land, making landfall. Just a matter of, as far as these counties along here, which county gets hit the hardest is still remains to be seen because the closest point to the center of circulation is going to have the strongest winds. But the impacts here are going to be vast over along a very big area moving off to the north and east you're going to have a lot of impacts including tallahassee major city obviously the capital of florida big city is going to be getting hurricane force winds and, and for farther inland is going to receive that too so uh everybody's gonna be glued to the weather channel this morning i'm sure with the coverage of this particular storm but this is just a monster it is probably going to be a category four right? at the very least a high-end category three at landfall which would be 125 ish but it gets to 130 it's a category four and that's what the National Hurricane Center thinks it's going to do. But it is not going to be visiting our area. It heads off the Carolina coast here and then starts drifting southeast after that point. And we know that because the European Ensemble that I talked about a couple days ago, uh, again, this is Hurricane Franklin out here, which is going to be heading off in this direction like this. Uh, see how tight the couple it is here? Same thing here with the Big Bend area of Florida. We know where it's going to land. Uh, this, this isn't a guessing game anymore. Uh, so once this, uh, once they're, when they're that tight, all these little L's represent an individual member of the European Ensemble, which there's 50 of them, and they're all very tight and compact, which means this is not going to be making any crazy turns or surprises or anything. And look where it goes, right off that same area where the National Weather Service has it, uh, National Hurricane Center has it, and there are no L's up in this region. In fact, there's high pressure. Uh, sitting over top of the region right here, which is going to block this thing from coming northward. And all, I mean, your your spread is right here. That's it. Okay, that's it. And and it's not even a matter of track with some of these L's that are hanging behind. It's a timing issue with these particular. Um, some of them going a little bit slower than others, but they're all doing the same thing. Everything's doing the same thing. So there's no guessing game here. We know what's going to end up happening. Uh, and again, going back to our. Um, you know, our system here, we're going to go to the uh, 12Z run just so I can move this forward. 
and see there's absolutely nothing here to deal with until we get at least until the end of next week. And even that is just a weak frontal boundary. There is a frontal boundary moving through uh, Thursday night of next week, but there's not any precipitation with it. So unfortunately, you're not going to, if you're looking for rain, you're not going to find it here. It looks like for the next seven to 10 days after this cold front moves through this morning. I'm EPA WA meteorologist Bobby Marchus. That is your outlook for August 30th, 2023. Have a great Wednesday.